first, we're starting with Everglades National Park. And, and the reason why is because we have an excellent opportunity there to collaborate with the biologists at the park. Um, there's a woman there named Hillary Cooley that's been an excellent collaborator that was able to uh, provide us with a link to access funding, which makes this project possible, of course, and then help us to navigate the complexity of finding and accessing research sites the progress in this type of research is also hampered by site accessibility. So we are still at the stage of identifying appropriate research sites and then getting to them. And so other efforts that have uh, used, you know, digital, what's called digital sketch mapping from helicopters to, to map invasive plants and native plants in, in the park provide us the uh, initial information to, to, to find research sites, but then we have to get there and actually deploy this technology and make these measurements. And that is uh, no small feat in the Everglades. The, the conditions in terms of mosquitoes and heat are one thing, but physically getting there and moving around in these plant communities and doing these measurements is, is quite difficult. And so it's, um, it's an exciting and fun part of research, but it's also very difficult and some strenuous. Yeah. And then you have to deal with the bite, uh, the pythons, the alligators. I could not yeah. do your job. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We went to a few sites hoping that we could drive to some of them, but there's very few roads in Everglades National Park. So then we also took a boat to a few sites, which is relatively easy and kind of fun for part of the trip. Um, but then we were a couple of weeks ago, we we're in a helicopter and we went to eight different sites trying to scout out where can we actually take these measurements and do this research. So we're at the beginning stages and again, and, and you know, going in a helicopter over Everglades National Park is really exciting until you have to think about, well, how much fuel do we have? How much gear do we have? How much food and water do we have? How long can we be at a site and do these measurements? The logistics behind doing this research is is daunting. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I had that exact word in my head. <laughs> so, And we tried to understand that at the beginning, talking with our collaborators, people that have been working on the ground there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just really hard to understand until you get there and are trying to, well, I'm just going to walk over there and look at these plants. And then you try to do it. And that's a whole different thing. Oh. Invasive plants, how dangerous are they to the Florida environment? So one thing I think is important is to understand that there's a difference between non-native species and non-native invasive species. So of course, in Florida, we have many very important, economically important and, and um, important for other reasons, uh, non-native species. So things like citrus, inc incredibly important for the economy, uh, important for a, you know, a food source. We have many important horticultural species in our landscape. The problem species are those that are non-native and invasive, which means that they readily establish and they spread, particularly in, in not natural areas. And so those are the ones that we're most concerned about. And so the impacts they can have, the effects that they can have are, can be wide ranging from affecting biodiversity, so the number of species and the types of species in a community, to how an ecosystem functions, so the access to uh, clean water, how this ecosystem filters water, how it processes nutrients, which is, of course, important for uh, understanding uh, the, the impacts of, for example, fertilization of agricultural fields and how it affects our aquatic systems. And so invasive plants may play a role in determining how the ecosystems function. They may also um, do things such as alter fire regimes. So natural fire processes are really important for many of our native Florida ecosystems, but having an invasive plant, such as an invasive grass in those systems can alter the fire regimes to where it may cause disproportionate number of trees to die, which we don't want to happen, um, or it may make the fires actually more dangerous for, for humans and for, for structures, for example. There are very uh, important and highly problematic invasive plants in Everglades National Park, such as Brazilian pepper tree and old world climbing fern. And uh, these invaders are thought to be um, impacted by hurricanes. And of course, with climate change, we have, uh, it's, we are expecting more frequent and higher intensity hurricanes. Right. You know, when people talk about artificial intelligence, we, 
we always think of just the internet, or at least I think of just the internet. I never thought about nature. So is that a reoccurring theme or something new that's happening out there that I just missed? So it's, it's relatively new to me too, um, because most of my work in my career has been on the ground, looking at individual plants, measuring individual plants uh, or, or populations or localized communities. What remote sensing and artificial intelligence allows us to do is to scale that up to, to much broader areas. And of course, when we're talking about something like Everglades National Park, a million and a half acres, the individual counting and measuring individual plants on the ground is only going to get you so far. And when you're talking about things like hurricanes that are having widespread effects. So this is where there's exciting opportunities to, to, to do this interdisciplinary research with people that utilize this type of technology. It has been used fairly extensively in recent decades. So what we're doing is not uh, new in the sense that uh, no one's ever thought about how do we understand where plants are on the landscape using this technology. And how long do you think this research will last? Uh, a year, two years, five, ten? Yeah, so our initial effort here is to really connect the data that we get on the ground to the data that is gathered by these remote sensing devices, what is called hyperspectral sensors. And so these sensors we need to train them to, we need to take the data from them to train the programs to understand what, what is a native plant, what is an invasive plant, what are these different species in the community. So this initial effort, which will take us at least two years, is really just the foundation for developing a larger effort of saying, where are these invasive plants across the landscape? And then much farther into the future saying, can we predict how hurricanes will alter the distribution and abundance. It's nice to frame the project within that goal, but that goal is a years long effort and a very expensive effort, frankly. Like we need funding for this type of science because the technology costs money. We have to have people on the ground using the equipment, doing the plant identification and measurement. Fantastic. Well, I guess we'll have to catch up in like a year, right? Or two. <laughs> or two. <laughs> okay.